As uh, we promised, Rick Pitino, the new book, uh, The One Day Contract with Eric Crawford, is a terrific book. I'll get to all of it. I actually had the book home. I had the page proof that they sent me the sample copy a while ago, and I had some notes for when Rick was going to come in from the book, so I had some stuff I had written down it's from the page proof. Uh, here's a real copy of it. Uh, Rick will be making appearances. I'll get to all that with him. And, you know, many years ago, he and I were in the same Catholic school league probably at the same time. St. Dominic's for you, Maria Regina for me, so the same league at the same time. So many, many years ago. How you doing? How's everything? Everything's great. Good to see you. Um, what did, what, before we get to the book, this championship, you know, you'd won a championship. Now you have another championship. What did this championship mean compared to winning the first championship? The first championship, there was so much enormous pressure on the basketball team because we, we, we left the scandal era of Kentucky. And now this second unit of my basketball team probably could have been in a Final Four. I mean, that's a great team. Yeah. Yes. A lot and of we're, pros. We're averaging yeah. by victories by 28 points a game. Right. Then it's in the Meadowlands. Right. It's it's not we're not used to that you know like being in the middle of a of a final four you're really in the Meadowlands away from everything right so you enjoyed the celebration of winning it all and for it was more certain, relief it was just a culmination you were happy you reached your goal this was totally different this was when I started writing this book it was over a year and a half ago and it all started because I was going to go into broadcasting I. I Two years ago, I said, that's it. It's been a great run. Let me go into broadcasting. And my wife said, you, you can't do it. I, I watch you go to bed at night on the phone to, the, to 1 o'clock in the morning talking basketball. You wake up talking basketball. I said, well, I'm going to do it with broadcast. She said, it's not the same. You're going to miss it too much. We talked all night about it, and I agreed with her. And I said I was going to change everything because everybody, when you turn 60, says, how long are you going to do it? Right. And I said, you know what, from this point on, I'm going to have, I got it from my brother-in-law, Billy, many years ago, and you'll remember this. We're sitting in a bar in New York City, as I was the New York Knicks coach, and he says, I can't believe they just gave John Konkak a $20 million contract. He's averaging two-plus points per game. And I said, well, that's based on potential. And he said, it's crazy. I said, well, you have it in, in Wall Street. He said, we're only as good as our last trade. We live on a one-day contract. So it always stuck out in my mind. Years later, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live on a one-day contract. I'm going to prepare for one day. Everything I do is going to be based on a one-day. And I preached it to my team last year. I said, you're all, all on a one-day scholarship. Let's, let's play the game as if we have a one-day contract. You know, it's funny. Your team you know, had its ups and downs, came on so strong that by the time it hit the tournament, it was a juggernaut. I mean, did you realize, you had to realize you had a special team when you got to the tournament, right? Because you were so good in the Big East tournament. And, I mean, you didn't go in that way, but you was, you had stormed through that. You came out, a lot of people were saying, wow, this team's going to be hard to stop in the NCAA tournament, which you know is always, one game is always very tough format. Yeah. So you, anything can happen, as you know well. But that team was playing really well when you hit the tournament. Even our losses, not that there's good losses, but five overtimes at Notre Dame, mm. uh, at the buzzer at Georgetown, Syracuse at the buzzer at home. Uh, we lose the ball. They score at the buzzer. And so, it, you know, we were right there, and then we went on an incredible run in the final game with a Syracuse crowd in the garden, the last game ever played in the Big East, which was important for me personally. And you were down big in that game. You were down, down like 18. 15, 15 points, 18 yep. points, yeah, and you made an incredible run. A 44-10 to 10 run. Yeah. And uh, capped off by President Clinton coming in the locker room for the second straight year, which was an enormous treat for my guys. You know, it's that team. And then you have the injury, which was such a, I mean, a rough thing to watch. But it seemed to really even unify your team, that injury, huh? You know, when it happened, none of us really knew what happened. I went to pick him up. I saw it. But I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. I never saw it. I don't know yeah. if they showed it or not. I didn't they, look. I, I looked I go, away. I didn't want to see it. It was, uh, and then all of a sudden, as I went to pick him up, my eyes got big, and I looked at it, and I said, oh, my God, what? You, you I realized bone, what right? it was. Yeah. And it, he was in total shock, so the good thing is he wasn't in any pain. Right. And then Luke Hancock was saying a prayer. All of us felt sick to our stomach, and then he finally said to the guys, which is, by the way, he's a very quiet guy and a personality has evolved from this injury, and he said to the guys, look, I'm going to be okay. 
you've got to win this game. And then when we got in at halftime, I said, guys, you know where the final four is? And they all said Atlanta. I said, where's Kevin from? I said, come on, let's get this thing together. And they did. You know, uh, we're talking, of course, with Rick Pitino. We'll get to the book, the one-day contract. That final game, interesting matchup. You and, of course, another guy who doesn't have your reputation but is a terrific coach, as everyone knows, a very hard coach to coach against. And a unusual night because they have a kid who goes or Now, they have some big players, obviously, which you're probably telling your kids, listen, you got you got to stop this guy, you got to deal with this guy. They have a kid come off the bench, no one knows who he is, don't even know his name, and the kid goes crazy in a championship game. What are you thinking as that's unfolding and this kid has gone unconscious in the game? Well, as you know, before the game, you put, you go through the edits right. of every player's abilities. His was the shortest edit of all time. He's averaging <laughs> two point. points a game. Yeah. <laughs> and so Russ, all Russ was telling the guys on the team, he couldn't wait Russ Smith to guard Trey Burke, the right. national player of the year. And right. with four minutes to go, the last time out before halftime, I, I said, Russ, could you do me a favor? Maybe you could concentrate on stopping a guy <laughs> averaging less than two points a game because he's got 17 now. And I told the team at halftime, he scores another point. All hell is going to be paid. What's really good about this book, and I highly recommend it to everybody, is A, how honest you are about yourself. B, you gave great examples of each thing. And, you know, you really hit on some very, very good topics. And the first one is humility. And that's a big one for you in the book, okay? And one we can all learn from, okay? I never thought of you as being the most humble guy in the world. I don't think of me as being the most humble guy in the world. How about humility? Is that something you had to learn through the years? Well, I wasn't. You're right. You always think you're the reason the team is winning, and not until failure comes about do you realize it really... You haven't had a lot of failure. No, but with the I mean, Celt- maybe not winning a championship. Boston Celtics, is that a failure? That's a failure because we take over a team with 15 wins. And the reason I take the job is because of Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, of course. But when you realize and you study it, you have a mini dynasty happening at Kentucky. You leave and you really only had... I didn't realize until after the fact you only had a 28 percent chance of getting the ping pong ball and you have two was chances that a tough, was that tough to leave kentucky or was it an easy thing to, you got a huge contract from boston which i understand so at that point in your life maybe money was an issue i don't know if it was but was it easy to leave kentucky or tough it's tough after the fact but i gave 10 ex- reasons why i left Two of my children were born there. It's the Boston Celtics, of course. I did like professional basketball. I attended school at UMass. But because my ego would never allow me to tell the truth. The truth was they gave me $50 million. Right. And, a lot of money. And, and it is. But I had more than enough money at Kentucky. But so, money is also shows worth. It shows, hey, I'm wanted, you know? Yeah. As I look back on it, it was the greatest move I could ever make because I gained a, a – I think if you, if you are without humility – you never quite reach your potential. I think 65%, just to give you an example, and you know the NFL better than me, but 60 to 65% of ex-NBA basketball players declare bankruptcy. Amazing. So why is that? Without question, it's, it's a lack of humility. It's, it's the feeling that's going to last forever when you're probably going to be done at 30. Tell them what the idea of the one-day contract is. The one-day contract is... Basically, you start each night preparing for the next day. And when you wake up the next day, you have one day. How good would an athlete be? How good would you be, me, any salesman, if they had one day to renew their contract? You've got to bring your A game every single day. And it's all about reaching your potential. Now, I do talk, you and I like horses. We have meaningful distractions in our life that's important so we don't become a dick for a meal where we burn out entirely. So burnout is something you can't always be under a one day contract. But while you're every day when you wake up, if you're focused, if you're I asked my team this question the other day because the chapter three is the trap of technology. I said, how many of you guys do social media? How many hours a day? They you know, they understated it because they're not going to tell me the truth. A hundred percent. They said four hours a day with meaningless social media. Meaningless. Meaningless. I said, how about taking an hour of that time and putting it to academics, another hour putting it on your agility, your quickness, your shooting, your ball handling. Just think of how good you would be because you watch people at dinner today. I I saw it last night here in New York. The table next to me, they were on their phone the entire time. You you watch someone, you watch driving here, I drive here every day. People walking across the street almost get hit every day. They are on their 
their iPads and their iPhones while they are walking down the street and they're not even looking at the traffic. Yeah. I mean, people are now forgetting the cause. I mean, people are crazy with that stuff now. They don't even look up. And, and you look, technology is great. We all need it. In yeah. your industry, it's, it's essential. Yours but too, yeah. when you're at the dinner table and you're supposed to be communicating, I don't think my guys call a young lady on the phone to ask her out. I think they just use Facebook. <laughs> I really do. I'm, they, you it, know, it's, I'm, I'm and, sure it's a new world. And, you know? and I'm trying to fight it. To a certain degree, I when we go. Do you to dinner, outlaw like? Can you? We don't, what we about don't, tweeting? You, we don't have you, Twitter. Uh, uh, your guys allowed to tweet? Have, then we allowed. don't have Twitter. Okay. Now I let them Instagram, but when we go to dinner, as a team, no, no if stuff. their phones are out, I take it away. And Mike, how about this? I could run them for one month at six a.m. and they'd be fine with it. If I take away that phone for twenty-four hours, you they want to transfer. You, you said before in closing that your wife talked you out of going to TV. Now you've won a championship in those two years. Now you take it one year at a time at Louisville? Or, you know, or are you still thinking about going to TV? Or now are you going to stay put? I'm going to live by this book. but I, I, think I know you the, have a lifetime contract, so you can stay you, as long as you I want. Think, I think, Mike, here's my, my barometer. My barometer is I just told you my schedule of mm -hmm. each assist. Um, I love teaching the kids individually. Just the off, I always love improving jump shots, right. improving moves. When there comes a time where physically I can't do it, your knee's too arthritic or you're too... That's when I know it's time. Not, not Are you losing, still excited to go do it? Oh, I, I'm more passionate now because I know my window's closing.